Today we're going to walk you through how to remove, disassemble, and repair the instrument cluster from most 1992 through 2002 international heavy duty trucks and school buses. Seems to be a pretty common problem with these clusters wanting to fail. And today we're going to walk you through how to do this. So in order to get started, we're going to need a half inch open end wrench, a Phillips screwdriver in order to get the gauge cluster out of the dash, and then we'll need a soldering iron and some solder to make the repair. Let's get started. Before we can get started and get this gauge cluster repaired, we got to get the dash disassembled and get the gauge cluster removed. So in order to do that, we got a Phillips screw on the top side of the dash here. There's another Phillips screw over on the far side here. We'll go ahead and remove both those. Once we get those out, we should be able to remove this, this section of the dash. There's a clip here. So now that we got our lower screws out, we have a clip on each side in the top. Press that with a screwdriver, give the dash a little pull. Then you can slide the dash out. At this point, we gotta look behind the dash, your two air lines, your primary and your secondary air lines hook here, and you have a couple of electrical connectors. First thing I like to do is mark which line goes where that way it makes it easy to put back together so you can see here I put a mark so when we go to reassemble our airlines we know exactly where they go so we're gonna have to disconnect both those airlines and if we look back here there's two electrical connectors there we'll have to unplug there's a third electrical connector here and then this truck actually has a mechanical oil pressure gauge so we're also undo this nut it's an oil pressure line so we got to be careful it may drip a little oil out but we basically got this electrical connector here to unplug this oil line the green electrical connector here the white connector and then our two air lines and then we can go ahead and get this gauge cluster removed. So now that we got everything disconnected and unplugged from the gauge cluster, we can go ahead and get it out of there. Take your time and snake it around the steering wheel. Now we'll take it over to bench, get it disassembled, and I'll show you how to repair the back side of this. Okay, so we got our gauge cluster out the truck. We got it over here in the bench. Next thing we're going to have to do is we got to take the back this little cover plate off 
and remove the circuit board so we can re-solder the connections on this green connector. Our issue basically comes with the solder joints on the back of these connectors. So we're going to remove this little protector, remove all the screws, pull the circuit board out, and then we'll go ahead and solder it. So, going to be some Phillips screws. screws we have one here we have one here the other thing we have to do is we have to disconnect the hour meter if your gauges have that and the odometer that way those will stay we'll put these connectors back through there just pull the little locking tab gently pull up on them Once we get our screws out, we're going to pull this circuit board out. But you have to watch the each gauge has little rods that pull through these things. So you kind of got to be gentle and work them off slowly. I usually stick my fingers down in the holes. Helps me pull on it. So here's our connector when we flip this over. These big joints right here. We're going to want to go back and re-solder these. You can look at them. I've never seen one that I can actually see an issue with. But once you re-solder them, your gauges will work and you won't have no problems when you hit bumps and they won't just go in and out as they please. So we're going to take and solder these and just put a dab of solder on each one. It seems to be a poor connection in the factory when they built it. Just not enough solder maybe. Another thing I like to do is when I'm in here, I go ahead and change the light bulbs. Issues. Let me get my soldering iron warmed up and uh, we'll get into this. Show you how to do it. Some regular resin flux cord solder typical soldering iron the key to soldering and not overheating is getting enough solder on your tip to get good heat transfer See, I get the tip nice and silver, shiny. Put it on there. And you want to make sure and not put enough solder that they join together. work our way down. So I got the first three done. I say the key is having enough solder to get a transfer. You don't want to leave your soldering iron on there for no longer than you have to. The faster the better. The solder gives you contact and gives heat transfer. So 
now you can see I've just put a little dab of solder on each one of these pins. Just try not to make sure and put enough solder that you bridge them together because then you, you're going to have bigger issues than when you start. So now that we got that soldered, I'm going to go ahead and swap these light bulbs out and then we'll get this put back together. find your light bulbs at the local auto parts store. I have trouble finding one store that has enough of the same bulb, so if you notice, I buy 73's and 74's, and they will both work. But it's the only way normally without ordering them or going to two or three different stores that you can get enough bulbs to do a complete dash. These are turn signal indicators. That's why I didn't swap those two out. Your air pressure. I always make sure and swap this one because if it goes out, it's completely dark. Most of the other ones, if you miss one, it'll get a little glow from the other bulb. But this one, means this gauge is completely on its own, it'll be pitch black. You get nothing. So we want to make sure and change that. Now we got our bulbs changed, our joints soldered. We're going to go ahead and feed our hour meter and our odometer plugs back through the hole. We're going to line the pins up on the gauges with our little, and then we're just going to gently push that down. Now we got all our screws back in, we got new lights. Now we got a gauge cluster that should work and not give the customer any problems. I think what I will do is I'll go ahead and pull this off and clean it. Basically we had some Velcro back there. Three screws and had to pull some Velcro out. See if your gauges are loose like this, take and put some super glue on. And you can glue them back in place so they don't move. So, to install the gauge cluster, we're basically just going to reverse our order of operations of what we did to disassemble it. First thing we got to do is get it shooed back in there. Then if you got a mechanical oil line, we're going to go ahead and hook that up first. hook up our airlines and again hopefully you mark them so you know which one goes where got that we can go ahead and get our electrical connectors plugged back in we got all our electrical connectors hooked up our airlines just push it snap it back in make sure your two clips pop in the top and you put your screws back at the bottom you can go ahead and Put our dash piece back in here. Get it screwed back on. Line your clip up. Snap it in. And that's a wrap. Got our gauge installed. Okay, so now we got everything back together. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see if everything works. Our gauges work. 
Our fuel level gauge is not, but that's because that's a bad sending unit. These trucks, when the sending unit goes bad, it goes to max full. If you touch the two wires together, it'll go back down to zero. Just check. Yep, lights work. That was the customer's biggest complaint is he didn't have no lights ever. And then some of the gauges will work, sometimes they wouldn't. Looks like we got it all working, got lights. Awesome. Well, if you've made it this far, hopefully now you've got a fully functioning gauge cluster. If we've helped you sort your problems, or you just like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. We'll be doing more videos on re international truck repairs.